Hi there, it's Kevin with the Rogue Market here with another Commander 2019 video. This one is going to be talking about the Populate deck. So the entire Populate deck should be spoiled later on today. However, we have had some of the cards spoiled today, earlier today, and we're going to be talking about those cards as well as cards that work around the cards that have been spoiled. So over here at Tending the Nest, over here at the Wizards article, the... Atla Palani Nest Tender has been spoiled. And this one's an interesting card because it has a birthing pot type effect. So I'm thinking a lot of cards that untap this commander or copy the abilities, either Illusionist Bracers or Astronic Resonator, copying the triggered ability, go pretty well with this card. So keep your eye on those two cards. I believe Astronic Resonator has already been spoiled uh, in the commander set, but I don't think Illusionist Bracers has, and it does work quite well with this commander. Uh, so this says create a 0-1 egg creature token with Defender, and whenever an egg you control dies, you reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card, and put that card on the battlefield, and the rest on the bottom of your library. So of course, populating the 0-1 egg creature tokens are, is going to be very good with Atla Palani Nest Tender, and we already did have the Conclave Exile that was also split. I believe this is going to be the one that is on the outside of the package. Uh, and this one does work with Populate as well. When there's a battlefield, it creates a 4-4 Rhino with Trample. And when it attacks Populate, the token enters the battlefield tapped and attacking. So interesting little pop Populate type cards. And there will be a lot of cards that are just going to be shoe in for the deck. So if we're actually looking at the cards that have been spoiled today with Populate... Populate, there are a lot of disappointing cards again with this deck, but there is some good ones that I think do need either reprints or actually decent reprints because they hold their own value. Or some of the new cards I think are going to uh, have quite a bit of value. Uh, this is actually the first one here, the Song of the World Soul. I think this is going to be the Chase new card so far that we've seen from the Commander 2019. It seems the most powerful, most versatile, the one that's going to slot in a lot of decks, not just populate decks. Anything that creates even a few tokens uh, is, is pretty decent with the Song of the World Soul. So whenever you cast a spell, populate, and you create a token that's a copy of a creature token you control. So many decks have... Uh, can easily slot this card in many commanders create tokens things like that i'm even looking like tasa uh orzov scion for example would be a great card just to chug in that deck uh plenty 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 of white decks are going to be utilizing this so this is the big standout that i think is going to hold value for whatever reason if this is pre-selling for cheap like under five under ten I don't know, under five is probably right i would pick these cards up quite aggressively we have shamanic revelation which is usually played in, in populate base decks for drawing cards. Uh, this card does seem every time it gets reprinted to hold its value and then rebound quite quickly. So if this card does get crushed, this is another pickup for the price for, for its bottom. So as soon as you start to see it ticking back up, I think the Shamanic Revelation is a buy. Definitely check out like Card Kingdom if they open a ton of sets of these and they dump the price down to this to bulk rare price or close to that. Definitely this is a pickup. So we have our Reckoning, which is an okay spoiler, but the Celestia Eulogist is also a really, really good populate card. Uh, for just three mana, you can exile a creature card from a graveyard. It doesn't have to be your own graveyard, and you can populate. And there's been a, a, some other good ones here with like the full flowering, which populates X times for double X and a green. And again, so far it looks pretty good for the populate deck. Where it gets quite disappointing is Angel of Sanctions and Trostani Celestia's voice as the mythics. Yes, Trostani typically does hold value. It gets reprinted and it does start to rebound. So Trostani was starting to rebound from its Guilds of Ravnica reprint. Uh, however, uh, both of these Angel of Sanctions, this is not that long ago, an Hour of Devastation, I believe. Yeah, one of them, Amonkhet. Amonkhet are Hour of Devastation with Angel of Sanctions. And Trostani had the Guild Kid reprint. So these two are just the, you just shake your, your head about, like, these are the mythics. I mean, I could see these rares being reprinted, but when they're the mythic slots uh, in a deck are given to both of these, uh, Trostani's, what, three? Angel of Sanctions, like a bulk mythic? Yeah, feels bad, man. Uh, Doom Artisan, though, is another pretty good uh, reprint. And, you know, so far there is some good cards in here. But as far as, like, where, when Gavin Verhe stated that they are going to be focused more on reprint value, that is absolutely ludicrous. I think they showed us the best reprint, which is Seedborn Muse. Like, uh oh we better, we better push it out there that we listened. And Seedborn Muse isn't even that... 
uh, interesting in the scope of things. I mean, just had the Battle Bond reprint. But anyway, this we're not going to complain too much in this video. That's for my other channel where I rant, rant, rant. However, for this video, we're going to look at Trostani, and then we'll do a follow-up video later on tonight about 10 cards like we did yesterday with the flashback deck of what I would invest in when we get a full picture of what is going to be in the deck. So you can get some inspiration for sure from this article as a, a decent spot for cards that could easily be put in this deck. Uh, there is, these two have been reprinted, Growing Ranks and Trostani. However, like Ultra Bone, this actually, Ultra Bone is, I believe this is Reserve List and Evolutionary Leap. Uh, it could easily go in like th this particular commander to give it a sack outlet. It also has some good ones here, like the God Sire and, and Tulsamar Wolf Blood. There are plenty of other ways that that, that uh, can sacrifice your creatures quite efficiently for value. Any birthing pod type effect, or or I mean, there's plenty of those in the uh, mix. Are, are definitely gonna go in Atla Polani Nest Tender. Like I said. Uh, the Illusionist Bracer, Stronic Resonator, those type of cards I think are are, are a given. Uh, but first of all, let's just take Trostani voice, uh, Celestian's voice as inspiration and look at the cards that actually see a lot of play for Trostani. So some of the new cards that were entered in the mix is Finale of Glory. Don't know how I feel about Finale of Glory in a populate deck. Like you're creating, you just need to create a couple cards, beginning tokens, and then populate those cards. So there's more efficient ways to do that than just a 2-2 two -two White Soldier token or, or possibly get the 4-4s four out. Uh, same thing with like a Johnny's Dream of the Pride, kind of awkward. A uh, generous gift uh, uh, probably will go in the deck. It's got a, a cute little interaction with uh, killing like flagstones or trocare. Uh, Parhelion, I just don't eight mana. I, it's in twenty four percent of the new decks of Tristani. It's too soon to be investing in this card, and it's just a rare with very little play. Uh, I mean, basically no play in standard. So it's just this commander deck that is is bumping it up. So let's look at the the classic cards for Trostrani. Armada Worm is a bit interesting, but I believe it also was in the guild kits. Don't quote me on that, but it's got a very, very low price tag. If you see the the, the decks out the gate starting around a lot of Armada Worms, I think that it could be a potential investment. It does put out one of the bigger uh, creature tokens with a 5-5 Worm with Trample. Growing Ranks did get a reprint. Sunder Growth is Definitely going to be in there, I'm sure, when they spoil the entire deck. Grove of the Guardian just has too much out there. It was a promo as well as, I believe, in the guild kits. And Avid the Worm, I think this one also got a reprint in the guild kit, right? And it also was in Modern uh, Masters. So there's just too much supply of all of these. If you're looking to scrape the barrel and make a double up on a bulk rare card, if you can somehow, you know, buy it for 20 cents and somehow trade it for 40 cents, 50 cents, you know, more power to you at that. But it, this is just, there's just too much supply uh, for too little gain for this top row to really uh, get me interested. The first one that really gets interesting if it doesn't see a reprint is Second Harvest. I do believe the vast majority of decks are going to be wanting to run Second Harvest. So for each token you control, put a token on the battlefield that's a copy of that permanent. So you're going to be populating a lot and you're going to be Second Harvesting instant speed, putting out a ton more uh, tokens. Typically, you know, the go wide populate strategies love these cards. The next huge one is going to be Anointed Procession. Anointed Procession goes in 76% of the decks. It's low on the synergy because it goes on a lot of other decks. But Anointed Procession does not see a reprint in this deck. It's going to have a double up. You can see that Card Kingdom is very aggressive already with the Anointed Procession uh, paying or, or selling it for $20. And you can go ahead and sell them a copy of Anointed Procession for $11 uh, or $14.30 credit. So that's a that's basically TCG mid. So I think, you know, if anyone has insider information, it's it's Card Kingdom. So Card Kingdom is, is notorious for being correct on everything ahead of time. And so Anointed Processions, I don't see it being a reprint, and this is a great investable card uh, based upon uh, this populated deck coming out. Phyrexian Processor, I think, is just too specific for Trostani, but it definitely could go in here. And Crested Sunmer also seems to be more of a specific Trostani build with the life gain. If we come over here with the top cards, we have Parallel Lives. This is another one that could easily go up if it doesn't see a reprint. Uh, Card Kingdom is not aggressive on this at the, at the moment, uh, but at Parallel Lives, yeah, usually they, they I mean, it needs a reprint for sure. Uh, but if it isn't reprinted, yeah, this definitely could go up in value in Innistrad Rare. Uh, Our Recording did get a reprint there. Sandward Convergence is interesting because I think the casuals are going to slot this in with an 8 mana, but Amonkhet supply is quite high. Uh, yeah, uh, this one's actually pretty good. That's a pretty good investment. Let's go down to a few other ones. The Rampaging Baylos just has a ton of supply out there. Probably will get a reprint in the deck. They seem to reprint this one very often. 
And if we, we, we continue to go down, uh, there's a few other interesting cards. Ovia uh, Pashira Sage Lifecrafter does seem very good in this particular deck. Being able to, same with this in Rise the Redeem, when you have a way to create some big creature tokens, uh, I think that, that this one could be a good target, to, but it's Kaladesh. Kaladesh Rare, Kaladesh Rare I don't think is where you want to be with, uh, with Ovea. So yeah, I'd give a pass on this one if you can pick these up for cheap. Uh, 25 cents is quite reasonable for Card Kingdom, so if you played like the store credit uh, game with Card Kingdom, uh, this is a good one to pick up eight copies of. From uh, That's where you cap out on Card Kingdom be, to, be able, to be able to buy uh, rares. That might be a good aid of just to throw in. Uh, the, the article did mention Desolation Twin. Again, Battle for Zednikar. It does see quite a bit of play in EDH. Like if we click on this, there, there actually is 3,820 decks that do run Desolation Twin. That's not great, but it's not bad either. And a 10-10 Colorless Eldrazi being able to populate, eh, eh. I get it's on cast though. That's also also awkward for the enter the battlefield uh, trigger that you're going to get off of an egg token dying. So I don't know. I think that's a hard pass on that. The Bramble Bramble Sovereign actually does look like a very good spec for this particular deck because whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, you pay two to make a copy. So I think Bramble's uh, Sovereign is going to go nuts. I think this is going to be a $25, $30 mythic from Battlebond. It's just going to make Battlebond even that more of a crazy value uh, booster box. So I am kicking myself for not dumping a, a, a thousands upon thousands of dollars of Battlebond. For me, it just came at a very awkward time in my life where I didn't have uh, disposable income to be investing. But I do know I have a patron that was able to purchase six cases of Battlebond from me at the 80, I think it was around what, $83 mark. So that patron is making out like a bandit. I believe they're already going for $200 on eBay. So that is not even that long ago. I mean, less than a year when Battlebond went quote unquote out of stock where you could get that price so anyway keep your eye on brand bramble silver and i think that it's going to have a massive increase avenger zendikar is a card that always goes up look at this little tidbit here with card kingdom card kingdom is currently uh selling it for eight dollars and you can actually card kingdom it to them for four dollars and fifty cents so there might be some room for arbitrage here let's go ahead and, and pick up uh see if there is some tcg market for the avenger of zendikar we have no, okay, so it's it's right around what what the uh, so the mid is lacking behind. So this is a card that is going up in value. The problem is we have this normal. You can't get a normal. Let's go to view all versions, see if we can find a cheaper version of this particular card. No, it seems like they're all a, yeah, they're all actually trending up. So this one, the dual deck. I wonder what the card king was paying for the dual deck version. Uh, so if we come over here, Avenger. And go to all editions, apply filter. Uh, the dual deck is going for. They're selling it for. You're, they're actually buying it for six dollars and twenty cents. So yes, there is a slight room for arbitrage here from Avenger of Zendikar from TSG Player. Uh, right here is a good one. Eighty-six copies from Owl Central Game. You could pick, pick these up for four dollars and eighty-nine cents, and then card keying them for either $6.20 or $8 store credit. So I'm not going to go ahead and do this right now. I'm going to let someone, one of the viewer actually take this, but this is a pretty good deal from this Owl Central Games uh, by picking it up and just, just it, it, that's not that much legwork too. So I get what we can just say after shipping, like five bucks a, a, a copy and there's 80, I mean, there's 400 bucks right there. Uh, and then you make a dollar on the 86 copies. So yeah, it's a pretty good haul. Uh, especially if you turn into store credit and then turn around and, and dump it for, you know, cards that bottom out, uh, like Modern Horizon cards or Ultimate Masters cards that are, are still low on Card Kingdom. Yeah, that one's interesting here. Voice of Resurgence is another interesting one. However, it doesn't, I it, it's, it's pretty good with forcing your opponents not to cast on your turn. Yeah, I it, it's fine. This one I think is is due to see play again in Modern, maybe. Who knows? Rise of Redeem, I do like as a spec for going up. I don't know how much the, the ceiling is for this card or how much. The thing with Commander is that it's not like Modern. There is no like like ceiling for where people will actually purchase cards for Modern. In, in EDH, there definitely is. Once it goes above, I would say even like 20 bucks, it really starts to affect the sale 
for commander cards. Yes, there will be people that want to pimp out their decks and, you know, go all out on cards and foils and stuff like that that will have that steady price increase, but it's different for when a card sees play in modern, that even expensive, say Bloom Tender, for example, saw a modern deck, that card would triple up in value. Whereas a commander comes out that uses Bloom Tender uh, would, would, you know, slightly increase its value, maybe like 20%. Uh, and have the slow growth. So I'm thinking that's the same thing with Rise the Redeemed. I'm not sure this is going to cause a price spike. So we have a few other uh, nice additions here, or nice cards that could be speculation cards for sure. Uh, Tender Shoot Dryad, Thrag Tusk could go in there. But I think really the good ones, the good ones that, that I would be looking at to invest in for sure uh, would be the the Anointed Processions. Avenger Zenicar is just a duck card uh, here with Card Kingdom being very aggressive on it. Uh, Giant Adiphage is actually quite... Looks like this one's going on TC Player. Are they actually selling it on Card Kingdom? 79 cents. That's funny. So TC Player has the Giant Adiphage going for... It's a good one to pot out to. I don't know. Kind of weak. Eh, there's plenty of cards, actually. Seems to have the mid that's just uh, got some bad data here. Anyway, um... That's all. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow this video up later on today. Just thought I'd give a heads up for this particular one. You can kind of see my daily routine of when I speculate into cards, how I do the process. So again, you get information like a spoiler. Uh, you start looking at, at, at buy lists and, and sell price and other examples. That's why I love EDH. It's the, it's the most known, like the casuals are going to do the exact same thing that I'm doing here. They're going to be like, oh, I know what to build a populate deck. Oh, what other populate decks exist? Oh, Trostani. I'm going to come over to Trostani and see what people actually play in, in Trostani. And then they start building their deck and it, then they start submitting decks. And then it causes a self-fulfilling prophecy where other people uh, start looking at their decks for ideas and then we have runway prices in these particular cards so second harvest would be the one i like the most if it doesn't get a reprint and because just the price point i really like this price point the three dollar range is where i, I like to speculate in cards because it's it, it's the most likely for a double up and then at that point it's, it's quite easy to get full value for those type of cards uh, and still do like the anointed processions i think it's pretty smart there's basically no spread between the card kingdom buy list and the tcg player and of course the avengers in a card is just a duh for 86 copies right there some with the capital for the Avengers in a car, I think that's a smart little buy from the Owl Central games and, and ship them off to Card Kingdom. Uh, hopefully they, they are actually near mint foils, though. I know that Card Kingdom is quite picky on foils, as they should be, because most players are quite picky on foils. And anyway, we hope you enjoyed this video. This has been Kevin with the Rogue Market. Thanks for watching.